Hey, what's up guys, Soldier Nose Best here. Now we're not that far away from seeing what the Samsung Galaxy S10 is going to be. And Samsung is gonna to try to keep as much as it can under wraps to kind of surprise us with this phone. But one thing that we can bet on seeing on this phone is going to be this new operating system coming from Samsung called One UI. So you are actually able to use this right now if you do own a Samsung Galaxy S9 or S9 Plus. It's in beta, so you can download it and you can put this on your phone and kind of check out the feature of Samsung Galaxy phones. And so this operating system is really aiming at two things, trying to make a cleaner interface, but also to make it easier to use on bigger phones. And one of the first things that I noticed when I first started playing around with it was the rounded nature of really everything inside of this operating system. Like if you go over to Bixby now, you're gonna see that when you're swiping up, all the different individual cards are more defined because they do have rounded corners and they kind of just slide up as you scroll through them, which I personally do like. And you can also see this when you pull down the notification panel, how uh, everything is kind of curved. And this is all throughout the operating system and it just makes for a really more uniform look. And I think it's more pleasing on the eye personally than having really sharp corners. And then the second thing I noticed is just how much I really do like what they're doing with the UI by pushing things down to the bottom of the screen because I like to use big phones like the Galaxy S9 Plus and the Note 9. And so for example, once you open up the settings app, you're gonna see at the top settings and then a lot of empty space. And then you're gonna see push down towards the middle to the bottom of the display. You're gonna see your different options in the settings. And then once you start to scroll up, it kind of quickly goes up to the top and fills up your entire screen with all the other different things that you can do inside of the settings app. So this does look weird at first, but after a couple of days of using it, I got really used to it, but it's just a lot quicker to get to what you're doing because everything is pushed down and I'm not having to stretch my thumb up to reach the top of the display. And so most of Samsung system apps have adopted this language and just after using it for a while, it just makes sense. And I don't know why everybody else doesn't do this, but I'm glad that Samsung is doing it. Now something else that helps Samsung with their reachability concept that they're going for is that they've moved to different sections that are within apps, like in the clock application, you do have a section for the alarm, the world clock, the stopwatch, and the timer. They move that from the top of the display down to the bottom. And it's a very little change. It's a minor change. Simple, simple change but it does make a world of difference. Now, I do think there are a couple of things that they can do better with this. Like in the phone application, if you look at the search bar that's all the way at the top of the display, I still have to reach up to, to get to that. And I think that they can move that down and easily sacrifice some of that extra empty space that they have at the top to bring that search box down to make it a little bit easier to tap on. And then when you open up settings and you go to accounts and backup, once you tap on it, they bring that empty space back down and push the other content back up, which doesn't make sense to me. So you can still slide down and get it to how I think they're trying to make everything, but um, I don't know if they're doing that on purpose, but I don't understand why they just don't kind of keep everything down at the bottom as much as they can. But besides those couple minor things, I think this reachability concept is the best that I personally use on a cell phone. So I'm looking to see how far they can take it and just how it's gonna make my life a lot easier using these bigger phones. And now something else new inside of this One UI are new gesture controls, which are kind of based off of what you find in Android 9.0, which Android One UI is gonna be running on top of. So now you can choose to swipe up from the bottom middle and that will act as the home button or you can choose to swipe up from the bottom left hand side and that will act as the back button or the bottom right hand side and that will bring up the multitasking panes and you can swap those last two just like you can normally and if you do need a little bit of help you can enable gesture hints to kind of give you a visual clue to where you need to swipe up so i can see this type of gesture navigation being the default on the galaxy s10 because samsung more than likely is going to be going for an all display phone in the front they don't want to have a notch anything like that so i can see them trying to make this display look as clean as possible and these new gesture controls will definitely help with that. And another thing that's clean is the new lock screen. By default, the new lock screen is super clean because they really just show you the icons for some of the notifications that you have, and then you can tap on them, and that would expand all your notifications out. Now, you can change this in the settings. You can change it to show you a little bit more information in a brief notification style, or you can go detailed to give you a lot of information on the display. But this just keeps me one tap away from seeing all those things. So it just really allows me to kind of appreciate the wallpaper that I have on my lock screen and that's really the main reason for me but yeah I think it looks clean I think it works well and for all of my dark mode lovers out there Samsung is adding an official night mode to this one UI so now when you start to use your phone in a dark environment or in a bedroom or something like that you don't have to worry about the UI just blinding you so it's going to turn everything dark which I personally do like just to kind of keep as a default so keeping things moving along Samsung is also making some changes inside of the camera application so this new software is going to be bringing some of the features from the Note 9 like the scene optimizer and so now you can just allow the 
phone to pick the right camera settings for whatever you're looking at. So if you're outdoors or if you're indoors or you're looking at a person, you're looking at a food, it can kind of just pick the right scene for that and maximize the quality of that image. And they've also changed the look of the controls that allow you to change between both cameras. And so yeah, these are the features that I wanted to show you of this new One UI. And personally, I do like it. It's a cleaner interface. It's easier to navigate, especially on a bigger phone. And I just think it's more uniform. And I like that Samsung is kind of just trimming down things. And I think that this is a safe bet to say this is going to be the operating system that's going to be running on the new Galaxy S10. And Samsung has confirmed that they're going to be releasing this new One UI officially on the S9, the S9 Plus, and the Note 9 at the beginning of 2019. So if you're interested in trying this out right now and you do own an S9 or S9 Plus, you can check out the beta if you wanted to. But if you don't have one of those, you kind of just have to watch this video. Sorry, but do leave your comment down below what you think about this new One UI, whether you like it, whether you hate it, let me know. And also be sure to subscribe to me here on YouTube and follow me at all my social media networks. Those links are down below as well. And like always, I do want to thank you for watching this video and I will catch you later. Peace.